the ancient church, before the reading, the priest would say, Wisdom, let us attend. And so as you stood today to pay close attention to those words, let me remind you that what we have here is not simply platitudes, pretty words that we're familiar with. They are wisdom teachings, the highest wisdom for daily living, for your own personal application. They aren't commandments, you must do this, not that, or moral codes. They are the pathway to the life that God wants you to live, to your birthright, to be that happy, peaceful person you were meant to be, and that most of us are not. So today we hear these words again, but in a new way, in a way that takes them seriously. And we have to deal with the hard facts, rejoice always. Who can do that? You know why it's so hard to rejoice always? Because we generally rejoice and are happy when we get our way, don't we? When things are going our way, when the weather's just right, when nobody's offending us and doing what we want. And here we learn the Christian way, the spiritual way, the deepest wisdom way. Just as Jesus says, those who wish to save their lives must lose it. Those who lose their lives will save it. He is saying that something within that only rejoices in reaction to what it gets has to die, has to be put aside. Friends, this is a methodology, a teaching, a process to allow us to have that joy that nothing can take away. There is such a thing. And all the great teachings of the world point to it. And here at the heart of the revelations of the Christ, we have that promise for those who truly wish it. Rejoice always. How do you rejoice always? How do you give thanks in all circumstances? There's a connection. You can't rejoice if you're not grateful. And you can't be grateful if you're not conscious of the reality of God. So we have to turn the axis of how we live our lives, each and every one of us. We were not born this way. This is not about someone who's positive all the time, glass half full, and the other one who's skeptical and half empty glass. Both are okay, but this is beyond both of them. This is a new way of being. The Christ way of being. The wisdom teaching revealed here in the Bible. And it is not out of our reach. In fact, God's effort through Christ is for us to find it. So, if we make that decision to enter the moment, this moment, and let go of the worries about the future, let go of the regrets about the past, but live in this now, where God is present, where that which is highest is present, where we can say, thank you, Lord, for right now. Then we have begun a new way to live. The trouble is, everything conspires to keep us away from that anchoring in the now, that consciousness of what is given to us, And then we just become buried alive under all of the things that we take for granted that cause us distress and fears. And where is our faith? 
Where is our connection to spirit? Paul says, pray ceaselessly. Friends, it is not about being a lunatic. It is not about mumbling prayers all the time. To pray ceaselessly is to be aware, alert, alive in the reality of the holy. Do you know that to see the good beyond the appearances is to be in a state of prayer? So that attention and prayer and love of God become one. And then you can begin to taste that ability to be happy even when everything is going wrong. Yes, that is the goal. Nothing in our mind and reason and culture leads us to think that way. I challenge you to take this and to hear it as the Holy Word so that with whatever big problem you might be carrying now, see if you can break through it and find that peace and that joy that nothing can take away. And then you will know something of the power of this faith. It's not just a belief system, it's an experience. You know that God is, you taste the reality of God and you can walk through anything. That is the power of these teachings, of this wisdom. This is why He comes and shares and bleeds and dies and comes again to us so that we can awaken to the fact that we are so much more than the mishmash of worry and fear, which is the human nature without the awareness of God. This is not for somebody else, this is for you. You are called to apply it even if it seems impossible. How can I be happy about this? See the larger picture. Know those sayings that when a door closes, a window opens. Discover that in that time of suffering, which only lasts for a while, you will come out the other side deeper, more empathetic, more mature, more whole as a human being. These teachings are to give us the tools, the keys, to build a life that has real power and meaning in it, not to just be a puppet on a string, always reacting to the next thing that comes along. You know, that's why the world is insane, don't you? Because there's always something coming along. And now it's bigger and bigger some things. And our faith gives us the means to see and deal with life differently. Indeed, to be happy when nobody else could imagine being happy because you are no longer just the ego. You have found that deeper place within that spiritual self that doesn't have to have its needs met, its need has been met. It is connected to God. That is our purpose and destiny. Now some of us have been locked in the habits of unhappiness for so long that we secretly enjoy being unhappy. In fact, the ego, the superficial part of ourselves, only knows itself by complaining. Think about it. That part of you that has to make a loud noise, that isn't happy about this and that, feeds on the negative to create itself. And that's what has to be crucified to walk the way of Christ. And what we find is the deeper life. When Jesus says, follow me, he doesn't mean walk literally behind me. He means come and find me where I am, which is in that deeper place 
in that spiritual part of yourself. So that all that life brings to us becomes fuel for strengthening that nobility of character that lives in joy and gratitude because it lives for God, being made by God, and gives itself fully just like the Christ has done. Don't you see that giving of himself, that emptying of himself fully, that total trust in God's providence is the model for each of us. Dare to try it. Try it on the little things and then build it up to everything. Now, you know, I'm not interested in talking philosophy to you in giving you something that sounds good and then it's gone in the afternoon. I'm talking to you today about joy, about being people of joy, about your true identity, being rooted in spirit and able to overcome all things, that yes, you can find joy when life has not gone the way you wanted it to. And I wish to convince you today that you can walk out of this sanctuary with a smile on your face. But I understand that this is hard wisdom. It's the narrow way. It's the way nobody wants to go because they'd rather live in their superficial selves. And yet it is Christ's way. It is that conscious effort way to be present to life in an objective and detached way because our love is on God, not on what happens to us. That's asking a lot. That's maturing in Christ, as the words are, or awakening to a greater consciousness. But I'm going to give it to you an easier way today. It's okay to find out that you are loved, that all will work out. Dare to risk being that vulnerable in your faith to be happy in spite of, dare to be grateful just because it's a lovely day, such a simple thing, and yet it's everything. Because the alternative is dark despair, bitterness, unhappiness, death before you die. Salvation is awakening to spirit, to joy, to gratitude and becoming a blessing to the world while you live on it. Glory to God. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, help us to hear your teaching, to apply it to our lives, to live by it, to be transformed by it. We ask this in your powerful and ever-present name and spirit. Amen.